Jessica Ashu is Deputy Director of Middle East Strategy Task Force at the Atlantic Council. She joins us now from Washington, D.C. Great to have you with us. How did this deal fall apart even before it got really started? I mean, this deal fell apart before it got started because it's essentially deja vu all over again from the last cessation of hostilities attempt uh, last February. And it fell apart, that uh, attempt fell apart in February under very similar circumstances. And in fact, uh, this one fell apart even sooner than the last one, partially because of what happened in February. And it was shown to the regime primarily that there would be no consequences from not following through on this deal. And without any type of enforcement mechanism, I just wonder what they thought was going to happen. And we're seeing Assad announcing a new ca military campaign in Aleppo. What does that tell us about Russia's influence over Assad, whether it's been overinflated by the US or perhaps whether Russia is complicit in this new campaign? Yeah, it's really difficult to tell actually how much leverage Moscow in actuality has over Assad. He's not a particularly compliant client, if you even want to call him that. And one thinks that the Russians might hold out any leverage that they do have over him for moments that are really, really necessary. And one might think that this ceasefire would have been one of those such moments. But again, it's really difficult to tell, particularly because Putin's interest in uh, the Syrian conflict is partially to demonstrate to the world that in contrast to the United States, the, uh, Russia stands by its friends. And so if there is any daylight between the Russians and the Syrians on these matters, they would be very, very careful for it not to spill out into the open because it would undermine Mr. Putin's credibility on that matter. And we heard the UN Special Envoy uh, Stefan de Mistura just a few moments ago saying that the next few hours, next few days are crucial to making or breaking this deal. What needs to happen next? Well, I mean, if they want to try it again, then you need to have a successful aid convoy go into uh, go into the besieged areas. But again, if it was me, I would have a real issue with sending humanitarian workers into harm's way a second time with adversaries that have proven to be, you know, really untrustworthy to the point of war crimes. Um, we also heard US, um, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry again calling for this no-fly zone. I mean, he seems quite set on that idea. But looking at the situation on the ground and looking at the relationships between Russia and Assad and the way this deal has gone, what are the chances of that happening? So a no-fly zone would be a great thing and, in my opinion, would probably be one of the only ways that you could get uh, humanitarian assistance into the besieged areas in Syria. But that's not exactly what Mr. Kerry called for. He called for planes to stop flying, mm. which again is a situation with no enforcement mechanism. And without an enforcement mechanism, I just don't see how one could convince the regime, which seems very set in its current ways, and the Russians not to stop aerial bombardments. And, you know, there's more than one way to create a no-fly zone. Zone, however, and I, I want to make this point because when people talk about a no-fly zone, they often envision it um, as an area that's patrolled by the United States Air Force or other major air force, very costly and a very large operation. But you can create a no-fly zone simply by making it unattractive for planes to fly there. And you could achieve that by providing um, limited amounts of anti-aircraft weaponry to vetted units of the Syrian opposition. If you know a helicopter dropping barrel bombs were able to be taken down, then you can best believe that the Syrian government would think twice about flying helicopters over civilian areas. Jessica Ashu, very interesting indeed to speak to you and get your thoughts. Thanks very much for joining us from Washington, D.C.